Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 15th of September 2021. So these are the list of articles chosen for today's discussion and let us start our first discussion by discussing about two previous year questions. So these questions will be about the Indus Valley Civilization. So it will be a recall for your preliminary examination. Followed by that, we'll be discussing about an editorial article regarding internet shutdowns. So next, the third article will be about GST and GST council. And we'll be discussing about an open article regarding electrical vehicles. Followed by that, we'll be seeing a data point. In this data point, we'll discuss about the APMCs. And finally, we'll end our discussion by discussing about an article regarding forest rights act so now let us begin our first discussion see today we have a article regarding keeledi excavation see we have discussed extensively about keeledi a lot of time one of the most important factor that you have to remember is some of the findings from the keeledi excavation bear a close resemblance to Indus Valley Civilization. So today for our discussion, we are not going to discuss about Keeladi excavation, but instead we'll be solving two previous year questions regarding the Indus Valley Civilization. Now let us see the first question. See this question was asked in the year 2019 preliminary examination. See the question asks which one of the following is not a Harappan site. See, by seeing Harappan site, you might get a little bit of confusion. Remember, Harappan civilization and Indus Valley civilization, they both are not different. They both are same. And the question asks us to find which one of the place is not a Harappan site. Option A, Chan Hodaro. Option B, Kot DG. Option C, Sagura. And option D, Desalpur. See both option A, option B and option D are one of the Harappan site. You can see them in the picture given below. Desalpur is in Gujarat state of India and both the Chanhudaro and Kot DG. Both of them lies in present day Pakistan. And remember option C, Sokwara. It is a village on the banks of Rapti river and it is present in the Gorakhpur district of Uttar Pradesh. This site has its own significance. See, a copper plate inscription was found here and the inscription dates back to the Mauryan Empire. So, Sogwara is also an historically significant village but still it is not a Harappan site. So, the correct answer for the question is option C, Sogwara. And moving on to the next question, this question was asked in 2017 prelims with reference to the difference between the culture of Rig Vedic Aryan and Indus Valley people. Which of the following statement is or or correct? First statement, Rig Vedic Aryans used the coat of mail and helmet in warfare, whereas the people of Indus Valley civilization did not leave any evidence of using them. And the second statement is, Rig Vedic Aryan knew gold, silver and copper, whereas Indus Valley people knew only copper and iron. On the third statement, Rig Vedic Aryans had domesticated the horse, whereas there is no evidence of Indus Valley people having aware of this animal. Select the correct answer using the code given below. Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 and 3 only. Option C, 1 and 3 only. And Option D, 1, 2 and 3. Now looking at the first statement, see if you know what is the meaning of coat of mail and helmet, you can identify the statement is correct or not. If you can see in this image, the coat of mail is used during the warfare to protect the soldier from injuries. In the image, you can see both the Indian style and an example of a coat of mail and helmet. So you can see the difference, right? Each coat of mail and helmet have their own style. And the first statement is correct because Rig Vedic Aryans use the coat of mail and helmet in warfare. Whereas the people of Indus Valley Civilization did not leave any evidence of using them. Now coming to the second statement. See, this statement is incorrect. Because various materials were used in Harappan civilization to make beads. 
most importantly stones like carnelian jasper crystal quartz and stellate and even metals like copper bronze and gold and shell faience and terracotta or burnt clay all of the above were used by harappan civilization and some beads were made of two or more stones cemented together some of the stones with gold caps so the second statement is incorrect because indus valley people were aware of other metals also now coming to the third statement see the third statement mentions that there is no evidence of indus valley people having been aware of horse see despite other views upsc considered this statement as correct to the people of mohenjodaro and harappa the horse seems to have been unknown but many references have made regarding surkotada site containing horse remains dated to 2000 bc which is considered a significant observation with respect to indus valley civilization even though this is not a conclusive evidence and this does not mean the indus valley people were not aware of the horses on contrary in the life of the vedic aryans the horse played an important part as it did in the lives of many nations from the northern grasslands so the correct answer for the question is option c 1 and 3 only now moving on to the next news article discussion now look at this editorial this editorial is regarding internet shutdowns see this editorial highlights an important judgment given in the case of anuradha bashin versus union of india and in this context let us discuss about the judgment the non compliance of our government and the demerits of internet suspension the syllabus relevant to this article is displayed here for your reference see on january 10 2020 the supreme court of india held that access to information through the internet is a fundamental right under the indian constitution this judgment was given in the case of anuradha basin versus union of india see in this case the supreme court of india held that any restriction on internet access by the government must be temporary limited in scope lawful necessary and proportionate so government can restrict internet access only based on these conditions so it should be temporary limited in scope it should be lawful most importantly and it should be necessary of the hour and most proportionate in addition to that the supreme court also reiterated that the government's orders restricting internet access are also subjected to review by courts so the courts can also review the orders given by government to restrict internet access so these are the important points that you have to remember from this judgment see according to the supreme court of india internet suspension can only be done in exceptional situations that is internet suspension cannot be done very often or in a frequent manner for example public emergency or a threat to public safety is an exceptional situation so in such cases the government can suspend the internet access also the internet suspension should be done in accordance with legislation but unfortunately none of these promises has been fulfilled even after the supreme court order we are still seeing a lot of internet shutdown instances right we are now the internet shutdown capital of the world many states and union territories have been severely affected due to the internet shutdowns the cruel truth is in most of these instances the government has not followed the supreme court's order or guidelines see when there is an internet shutdown the relevant government has to publish the information regarding the shutdown in the necessary medium only if it is published the people can be aware of it right so only then they can approach the judicial system for justice but in many incidents of internet shutdown the publication of internet suspension has not been followed either the publication of internet suspension is delayed or it is not properly published see the non publication of internet suspension orders 
undermines public confidence in the government the internet is a necessity in this day and age so restricting its access will only create a trust deficit among our people and another problem is that the union government has also not done enough to give statutory recognition to the direction in anuradha basin's case remember when i said that the internet suspension should be done in accordance with legislation this aim is not honored by our government we took a few steps for example in 2020 we amended the telecom suspension rules 2017 to limit internet suspension order to a maximum of 15 days however the amendment did not include an obligation on the government to publish orders nor did it include the supreme court's direction to undertake periodic review of these orders see if supreme court decisions are not statutorily recognized the officials enforce the law incorrectly simply because of lack of awareness for example take the state of meghalaya meghalaya in reply to an rta application stated that it was not even aware of the judgment in anuradha basin case so if even supreme court gives direction through cases and judgments but still as the government did not statutorily recognize them the officials enforce the law incorrectly so this is a problem right in addition to that internet suspensions have caused huge loss to our economy in 2020 alone the indian economy suffered a loss of 2.8 billion dollars due to 129 separate instances of internet suspension these suspension have also affected 10.3 million individuals see the internet is a source of information entertainment healthcare education livelihood and a platform for the members of indian society to interact with each other and the world at large so suspending the internet can cause economical psychological social and journalistic problems so the internet suspension should be imposed only in times of emergency it should not be used as a tool to curb the democratic exercise of the right to protest another thing is the internet can be used as a tool to verify rumors it will enable individuals and the government to share the truth see rumors spread in offline mode to right so in offline cases the internet can be used to quash such rumors but by suspending the internet we are only giving power to these rumors so considering these issues it is not surprising that the supreme court in the anuradha basin case permitted the government to restrict internet access only in limited circumstances very important point to note that is the supreme court of india has also allowed these restriction only in cases of public emergency or when there is a threat to public safety but yet to much dismay internet restrictions are much more common than we think of also there is a lack of transparency regarding internet suspension so it is tough to be challenged in court due to lack of transparency see faithful compliance with supreme court guidelines is executive responsibility and only by following these supreme court guidelines our government can rid ourselves of the tag of internet shadow capital of the world and fulfill digital india's potential so with this we came to the end of this discussion in this discussion we saw an important judgment given in the case of anuradha basin versus union of india so in this judgment the supreme court of india reiterated that the internet suspension can only be done in exceptional situations and it also reiterated that government's order restricting internet access are subjected to review by courts that is the court can review the government's order and we saw some of the impacts caused by the non compliance of the government to the orders of supreme court so in that we saw problems like non publication of internet suspension orders 
and lack of statutory recognition of supreme court's decisions and we also saw some of the impacts caused by internet suspension in the indian economy so with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article See that GST council may consider taxing petrol diesel and other petroleum products under the single national GST regime. So this is the news for today and in this regard let us discuss about the GST and GST council. First let us begin with GST. See GST is an indirect tax which has replaced many indirect taxes in India. I hope you remember there are two type of taxes. One is direct tax and the another is indirect taxes and very good example for direct tax is income tax you pay income tax for the income you earn right so it is a very good example of direct tax in which you directly pay the tax to the government whereas in indirect tax you pay tax indirectly for example if you buy any goods say it may be biscuit chocolate almonds anything so whichever goods or services you buy you'll pay a tax for the goods and services indirectly to the government when you buy these products so this is the indirect tax and before gst regime we had different indirect tax structure in our country where central and state government levied their own taxes so there were multiplicities of taxes being levied on the same supply chain So for example if you buy a biscuit center levies a tax state levies a tax and apart from that if the biscuit is brought to you from an another state say for example from jammu and kashmir to karnataka then the biscuit bears the tax for the each state it passes through so it's very complex and there were multiplicities of taxes being levied on the same supply chain but the introduction of gst was a very significant step in the field of indirect tax reforms in india because it replaced many indirect taxes that is these indirect taxes were consolidated into one that is gst goods and services tax see gst is levied on supply of goods or services or both at each stage of the supply chain starting from manufacture or import until the last retail level so as you can see these indirect taxes was consolidated into one tax and this reduced the ill effects of cascading taxation or the double taxation in a major way it also paved the way for a common national market the big advantage for consumer is the reduction in overall tax burden on goods now moving on to the goods and services tax council see the goods and services tax council is a constitutional body please make a note of this it is a constitutional body as you know gst was introduced by the 101st constitution amendment act 2016 this amendment also made constitutional provision for gst council under article 279a of indian constitution so gst council is a constitutional body and as per article 279a to the council is chaired by the union finance minister and its members includes the union state minister of revenue or finance and ministers in charge of finance or taxation of all the states so the council is chaired by union finance minister and the members include union state minister of revenue or finance and ministers in charge of finance or taxation of all the states now let us see some of the functions of the gst council see gst council shall make recommendations to the union and states on these issues the first is it can make recommendations on the taxes cesses and surcharges that are levied by the center state and local bodies which may be subsumed under gst then the goods and services that may be subjected to or exempted from the gst they can make a recommendation on that next it can also recommend model gst laws 
principles of levy and apportionment or allocation of integrated gst and the principles that govern the place of supply next is the recommendation of the threshold limit of aggregate turnover this limit determines which good and services may be exempted from gst then recommendation on any special rate or rates for a specific period which is to raise additional resources during any natural calamity or disaster so the gst council can make recommendation on these points we discussed previously now coming back to the news article see when national gst was subsumed five petroleum goods that is the petrol diesel atf that is alcohol tobacco firearms natural gases and crude oil so these five petroleum goods were kept out of its purview so the gst council might on friday consider taxing petrol diesel and other petroleum products under the single national gst regime and it is said that gst will be a solution to the problem of near record high petrol and diesel rates in the country as it would end the cascading effect of tax on tax so the news article conveys that if the five petroleum products which i mentioned before were brought into the gst regime it will be a solution to the problem of high petrol and diesel rate in the country because the cascading effect of tax on tax will end so with this we came to the end of this news article discussion in this we saw about what is direct tax indirect tax and what is gst that is goods and services tax and we also saw some of the important points about goods and services tax council we also saw some of the functions and some of the matters in which the gst council can make recommendations so now let us move on to the next discussion now let us take up this column article from the open page for our discussion as the title hints the article deals with the issue of electric vehicles see already india is progressing in the electric vehicle industry but the rate at which it is progressing is very low so the author of this article highlights two important strategy or measures to increase this rate of progression so we are going to discuss about these two important strategy in our discussion today with this idea in mind let us get into our discussion as we all are aware a lot of positive measures have been taken with respect to the two wheeler electrification in india for example the government has increased the fame to incentives for electric two wheelers to rupees 15000 per kilowatt from the earlier rupees 10000 per kilowatt see some states like gujarat and maharashtra have also announced state level electric vehicle incentives as part of their state policies in fact even many startups are launching new electric two wheeler models so based on these positive incentives we can expect the sale of electric two wheelers in india to double in 2021 compared to that of the 2020 levels but even if it happens the electric two wheelers will account only for less than a percentage of new two wheeler sales and this is where the problem is as we already saw earlier as pointed by the author one major reason for this poor sales performance is the reluctance that prevails among the gained manufacturers to understand better many big industry leaders and manufacturing gains for example honda bajaj suzuki royal enfield yamaha etc are offering very less choice to their customers for instances they offer only two electric models and that two only in handful of cities that is they offer only limited models in small quantity that two in several cities only see these big companies account for nearly 99% of all two wheeler sale in india if they themselves offer such poor choices then think about the other small manufacturers in the market 
they would not even be in this game right so this is the main reason for this poor sales performance that is the gained manufacturers are reluctant to offer better choices to their customers so if these gained manufacturers do not popularize electric vehicles then the small manufacturers cannot also sustain in the market so in this regard the author here suggests two measures or initiative which can actually help in overcoming this reluctance among leading companies so the first measure or incentive or initiative is to establish a zero emission vehicles that is electric vehicles credit program see this program as an approach is already practiced in many places like california and several us states as well and even china stimulate model availability of electric vehicles so what happens is under this program the manufacturers are required to produce a certain number of zero emission vehicles based on the total number of vehicles sold in that particular state so for the total number of vehicles sold in that particular state a proportion of that should be the sale of zero emission vehicles so as an incentive the manufacturers will be assigned a certain amount of credits based on certain factors like the range of vehicles the quality the quantity of vehicles etc this credit can be also called as regulatory credits and under this program the manufacturers are required to have a certain number of regulatory credits each year so what is this regulatory credit see government around the world have introduced this incentive for automobile makers to develop electric vehicles or very low carbon emitting cars so in order to push carbon emission reduction this credit are given to car makers so that they can use this credit to build and sell environmentally friendly vehicles so under this program it becomes a mandate for the manufacturers to produce certain proportion of zero emission vehicles and as an incentive the government also provides these regulatory credits so this program is called as the zero emission vehicles credit program or electric vehicles credit program and what happens if they cannot meet the target see they can buy these electric vehicles from other companies that have excess credits so this is all about the program and the author recommends this measure to india as well this is the first strategy and coming to the second strategy or second major initiative is to put in place a fuel efficiency or co2 emission standard if you remember there are emission standards for even normal two wheelers which uses petrol or diesel likewise we can put in place a fuel efficiency standard or co2 emission standard and the standard should be fixed stringent enough that it can be best be met by the making and selling of zero emission vehicles that is if stringent co2 emission is fixed then obviously there will be a shift from conventional fuel based vehicle to electric vehicle since they are zero emission vehicles and according to the author this approach can help getting fruitful results in india if applied with great effect so on that line the bureau of energy efficiency and the ministry of road transport and highways can set up two wheeler fuel consumption standards and this becomes the need of the hour so in brief the two reliable ways prescribed to overcome the manufacturers reluctance the first thing includes a mandate requiring them to build and sell electric vehicles and the second thing is a stringent efficiency standard and these measures help in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions and will also be a cost effective alternative for manufacturers so in this discussion we saw a major reason for the lag in the progression of electric vehicles manufacturing that reason is the reluctance among the manufacturing gains like honda bajaj etc 
and we saw two important measures or strategies suggested by the author to overcome this reluctance the first suggestion is to establish an electric vehicles credit program so that it will mandate the manufacturers to build and sell electric vehicles and the second suggestion is to introduce an stringent efficiency standard so with these informations let us wind up this discussion and move on to see what the next article has got to tell us now look at this data point earlier on 9th of september we saw about msp right so what is msp msp is minimum price through which the government is willing to purchase an agricultural produce from a farmer see when msp is set it has two objectives the first objective is to save a farmer from market price volatility so it was set up to save a farmer if the market price falls really low due to market glut and the second reason is that it allows the farmer to set up a competitive price with the market so these are two important objectives for which msp is announced but this data point says that many farmers still were selling their produces to the market only at this point many may wonder how the government buys the producers from the farmers now that government buys it through the government mandis here is where you should know about apmc see presently india's agricultural markets are regulated by the states and the states regulate the agricultural markets under the agricultural produce marketing committee that is apmc act see agriculture is in list 2 that is it is a state subject and it comes under 7th schedule of the indian constitution just know that the 7th schedule to the constitution of india defines and specifies allocation of powers and functions between union and states so it contains three list union list state list and the concurrent list so the agriculture comes under list 2 of 7th schedule of indian constitution important point to note here is that the agricultural market or mandis in most part of the countries are established and regulated under the state apmc acts so this is very important point to be noted the msp is a minimum price through which the government is willing to purchase an agricultural produce from a farmer so the government procures these agricultural producers through government mandis and these government mandis are called apmc and as agriculture comes under state subject the agriculture market or mandis in most part of the countries are established and regulated under the state apmc acts so remember these points so to say it in simple words the apmc are marketing boards established by the state governments basically to provide a platform for farmers to sell their produce the important objectives of apmc apmcs are to ensure that farmers are not exploited to ensure that farmers get good money for their produce ensuring transparency in pricing system and transactions taking place in market area etc as we have discussed apmcs are set up by the state governments there is no uniformity in their functioning various efforts to regulate the apmcs subsequently were taken but they continue to remain as an unpopular opinion among the farmers and the study in the data point shows that the farmers are currently not preferring to sell their produces in an apmc or mandis the data point shows three important reasons so the first reason is lack of infrastructure and the second reason is majority of farmers were ignorant of the mandis because they have to travel a long distance to reach these mandis so they were almost ignorant of the mandis they have to spend a lot of money in transportation itself so they were ignorant of the mandis so this is the second reason and the third reason is that the apmc act requires the farmers to sell the produce only through the mandis and this also gave rise to middlemen between mandis and farmers again the farmers were exploited by these middlemen 
and the real purpose of apmc is defeated here so over time government have enacted various law to overcome the shortcomings some of the acts like model agricultural produce and livestock marketing act 2017 electronic national agricultural market that is enam was also introduced model contract farming act 2018 and model agriculture law leasing act 2016 or some of the laws enacted by the government to overcome these shortcomings but still the farmers rely less on the government mechanisms that is the essence of this data point so in this discussion we saw about apmcs what are the objectives of apmcs and the three important points reflected by the data point so with this points in mind let us move on to the next discussion now let us take up this news article about the forest rights act 2006 So the news here is that after a long delay the Jammu and Kashmir government has decided to implement the Forest Rights Act 2006 and the implementation of this Forest Right Act is expected to elevate the socio economic status of the tribals and nomadic communities who resides there so this is the basic crux of this news article now based on this context Let us see some important features of the Forest Rights Act 2006. First of all, know that the full form of this Forest Rights Act is Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers Recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006. And this particular act recognizes the rights of the forest dwelling tribal communities and other traditional forest dwellers to forest resources. So the act recognizes the rights of the forest dwelling tribal communities on the forest resources because as we know these communities depend on the forest resources for a variety of needs including livelihood habitation and other socio economical needs see as i said this act recognizes the rights of tribals and other forest dwellers to hold and live in the forest land In addition to that the act also grants several other rights to ensure their control over forest resources and these include rights like the right to ownership access to collect use and dispose of minor forest produce and the community rights etc in addition to this it also provides for the diversion of forest land for public utility facilities like schools fair price shops etc that are managed by the government so the act recognizes the right of tribals to live in the forest land and it ensures their control over forest resources and note that the act instructs upon the gram sabha and right holders the responsibility of conserving and protecting the biodiversity of the forest wildlife and surrounding environment so the gram sabha and the right holders are responsible for conserving and protecting the biodiversity of the forest and apart from that they are also responsible to stop any destructive practices that affect the resources or cultural and natural heritage of the tribals now on talking about the people who have got the rights to claim these rights see all those members of communities of the scheduled tribes who primarily reside here and who depend on the forest or forest lands for genuine livelihood needs or eligible for these forest rights and in addition to them the rights can also be claimed by any member or community who has resided in these forest lands mainly for genuine livelihood reasons for at least three generations that is for 75 years prior to the 13th day of december 2005 so apart from members of scheduled tribes who depend on forest land for livelihood any member who reside in these forest lands for at least three generations they are also eligible for claiming these rights now coming to the benefits associated with the implementation of this act 
as we have witnessed during the past few years there were growing cases of tribal being evicted from forest land in the parts of kashmir valley and jammu region since the government has termed them to be illegal encroachers see despite tribal people having close ties with forest sadly there was no legal framework to recognize and on that line this move is expected to address the prolonged suffering of tribal people and to ensure forest conservation and most importantly the implementation upholds the basic spirit of social equality and how many as guided by the constitution of our country and parliament so in this discussion we saw about forest rights act and some of the important features of the forest right act and we saw who are eligible to claim these rights and some of the benefits associated with the implementation of this act so with this we came to the end of news article discussion now let us move on to the prelims practice question discussion see the first question is regarding the gst council consider the following statements with reference to gst council the first statement is it is a statutory body the second statement is gst council makes recommendations to the union and state government on issues related to goods and services tax you have to choose the correct answer option a one only option b two only option c both one and two option d neither one nor two see the first statement is incorrect because we saw in the discussion that it is a constitutional body and the gst council comes under article 279a of indian constitution this is because gst was introduced by the 101st constitutional amendment act in 2016 so gst council is a constitutional body and it is not a statutory body now coming to the second statement the second statement is correct see the gst council makes recommendation to union and state government on issues related to goods and services taxes so the correct answer for the question is option b two only now let us move on to the next question see this question is regarding the fame scheme in the context of phase 2 of the fame scheme consider the following statements this phase aims to generate demand by way of supporting e buses e two wheelers e three wheelers and e four wheeler passenger cars the second statement is only advanced battery and registered vehicles will be incentivized under the scheme which of the following statement is or or correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two option d neither one nor two see government has approved phase 2 of fame scheme for a period of 3 years commencing from 1st april 2019 so out of total budgetary support about 86% of fund has been allocated for demand incentive so it can create demand for the zero emission vehicles in the country right and this phase aims to generate demand by way of supporting electric buses electric three wheelers electric four wheeler passenger cars including strong hybrid and e two wheelers as well so first statement is correct now coming to the second statement know that only advanced battery and registered vehicle will be incentivized under the scheme and remember this scheme will be applicable mainly to vehicles used for public transport or those registered for commercial purposes in e3 wheeler e4 wheeler and e bus segments however private owned registered e2 wheelers are also covered under the scheme as a mass segment so statement 2 is also correct the correct answer for the question is option c both 1 and 2 see we discussed about the fame scheme right when we were discussing about an article regarding electronic vehicles so this question was based on that now let us move on to the next question see this question is regarding the apmc mandis 
consider the following statements first statement agriculture is a central subject second statement apmc mandis are established by center only third statement apmc were established to ensure that farmers are not exploited which of the following statement given above is or or correct option a one only option b one and two only option c two and three only option d three only see we know agriculture is a state subject right it is in list two of seventh schedule so first statement is wrong and as apmcs are established by the states as agriculture is a state subject second statement is also wrong and coming to the third statement statement 3 is right apmcs were established to ensure that farmers are not exploited it is one of the objectives of apmc so the right option for this question is option d 3 only now moving on to the next question see this question is regarding the forest dwelling tribal communities consider the following statements regarding forest rights act 2006 first statement it recognizes the right of the forest dwelling tribal communities and other traditional forest dwellers to forest resources second statement the act instructs the gram sabha and right holders to stop any destructive practices that affect the resources or cultural and natural heritage of the tribals third statement the act provides for the diversion of forest land for public utility facilities that are managed by the government which of the above statement is or or correct option a one only option b two and three only option c one and two only option d one two and three see based on our discussion we can infer that all the statements given here are correct and therefore the right option here is option d one two and three With this, we came to the end of the discussion. Mains questions are displayed here. Please write answer and post it in the comment section. With this, we came to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, like, comment, and share, and do subscribe to Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.